Hi, and welcome to section two, references. Okay, I find this is a little bit of a contentious topic sometimes. Um, from what I've seen, many people who have just started their art journey tend to either not want to use references, not know how to use them, or rely too heavily on one single reference. And so their work just ends up looking like a study rather than their own creation. So I'm gonna run through how I use references and uh, some of the rules that I give to myself, okay? So now that we have our character description, we're gonna go in and do some, what I would like to call targeted research. I know that sounds very business-like, but hear me out. So we, we have an idea of who this character should be, uh, where they're from, what time period they're from, et cetera, et cetera. So now it's time to do some research in terms of all of these things that we've determined so that we can give them a richer backstory. All right. So for me, I've gone out and found a whole bunch of uh, carvings and rubbings of ancient carvings of the goddess that I based my character on. So these are all carvings of Shi Wang Mu. And um, over here, we've got some artifacts from the Shang Dynasty, which again predates the Qin Dynasty. So I'm going to zoom in here and show you a couple of things. Uh, I don't know everything that's going on in these carvings, but based on my research and some help from my even more uh, historically nerdy friend, um, this is what I gathered. So uh, Shi Wang was actually the figure that's sitting in the middle here. And here beside her, she's got the goddess Nuwa and Nuwa's husband on the other side. And these two gods are incredibly important in Chinese folklore. Uh, Nuwa was actually the creator goddess who molded people out of clay. So incredibly important in the ancient Chinese pantheon. And she's surrounding this figure that I'm basing my character on. And then further out here on the left, we have the nine-tailed fox. And back in the day, the nine-tailed fox was considered a symbol of prosperity, fortune, and good luck as opposed to sort of what it's become now, which is kind of a seductress sort of a character. That came later. And on the right side here, way over here, we have the moon rabbit. And the moon rabbit is, legend says, lives on the moon and makes medicine and is the eternal companion of the moon goddess. So she's surrounded by quite some important characters, which emphasizes just how important she is. I don't really know what the rest of this is, so I'm just not going to talk about it in case I make a fool of myself. Um, and if we move over here, uh, the top part here is a rubbing of the carving at the bottom. So we'll, we see Shi Wang Wu in the middle again, and she's sitting on her mount, which is actually a white tiger. And again, on the left side, we have the nine-tailed fox. And in the center here, for some reason, it's not in the rubbing, um, but in the center here, I believe that is a dancing toad. I don't actually know who the toad character is, but again, there are people worshiping her and looking up at her in admiration. So again, she's a very important character. Sort of a recurring theme in all of these reference pieces that I have here. So I'm just going to leave it at that, but it's important to do some research to give your character some more depth and some more points of interest and things that you can incorporate into their design to give them a more unique look. In terms of these artifacts at the side, I just really like the patterns that are on them. And this face is incredibly unsettling and creepy, which I just like. I don't really know what this is either. But uh, do a little bit of research, do a little bit of reading, and understand exactly what it is that you're trying to draw and design. So next we're going to move on to details and references. And one of the most common questions I get is, Xiao, how do you put so much detail into your pieces? And the secret to that is referencing. So 
It's a big no-no to copy references directly, one for one, and change absolutely nothing. But it's generally okay to take one or two basic elements of certain references and use them in your own work. So here I have a collection of period-specific looks and references that I will be using in my piece. The first row here is a couple of different variations of Qin Dynasty women's clothing. And these are upper class women because their robes are so long and flowy that they drag on the floor. And no commoner would be able to afford this type of clothing. The changes are very subtle. The first one has a tighter cuff on the sleeves. The next one has sort of a jacket that goes over everything. The third one has a front extra piece that goes over the skirt uh, that's more detailed here. And the last one here has the front piece but narrower and doesn't have the jacket. Here in the lower left corner I have a couple of different hairstyles and hair pieces. And fun fact about this front piece in the skirt, it's actually used only in formal occasions, and the more formal you want your outfit to be, the more likely you'll have this extra piece in the front. It's supposed to historically cover your area, even though it's not really showing to begin with, but it's more polite to have it covered again. So that's how you make your outfit more formal back in the day. And then in the right corner here, I have a couple of patterns that I pulled from my reference book. The first thing here is a cicada. It represents purity away from earthly drama. And since she's such a central figure, even amongst the gods, she would very much likely be putting herself away from earthly drama, quote, quote. The next two patterns are some swirls and some more squared off swirls, which represent clouds and thunder, respectively. And then in the bottom here, I have a couple of beasts. They're just patterns off of some Shang Dynasty artifacts that I've seen. And they're, they were actually just labeled as beasts in, in my reference book. I don't actually know what kind of animals they are. They look cool, though. Moving on to the next part, we have primary and secondary references. Okay, this is, this is more of a rule to myself. Primary references, to me, are things that are historical in nature, their existing buildings and structures, their natural elements, like actual plants, uh, actual species of animals, their original folklores and myths that existed in history, and historical epics, poems, and stories. These things are generally out of copyright. Okay, so they're a little bit safer to use, and generally speaking, they're the quote-quote original source of the information that we're drawing upon. Now, on the other side, I've got secondary references, and these are things that are more contemporary. So modern stories, other people's art, uh, television and movies like Game of Thrones. And the general rule for using these two types of references is to mainly use primary references. Now, the reasons I've listed are as follows. First, a secondary source is another person's interpretation of a primary source, more likely than not. So if you use their work, your work will end up being an interpretation of an interpretation, which could be your intention, but I tend to try and stay away from it because then you can really challenge yourself to interpret the primary source and create something that's really your own. Also, secondary sources are subject to copyright, more likely than not, because copyright lasts for 50 years after the creator's death. So they're not in the public domain, and you can get called out for plagiarism, even if you did it unintentionally. It's a lot safer to go in history and find something that's in the public domain. And finally, um, I wouldn't really call it an exception, even though I wrote it here. I would say there are some secondary references that you can sort of use as a hybrid of a primary reference. 
especially if they're historically accurate retellings. There's an entire series about the Qin Dynasty that was produced in China, and they tried as hard as they could to make the settings and the costumes be as accurate to history as possible. So the way that they've interpreted the primary source is relatively spot on and accurate to what it should be. So in my mind, they're more okay to use as more of a primary source. But that being said, it's not okay to just take somebody's outfit from one of these shows and use it directly in in your piece. Because then that would turn into a study and not your original thing. All right. So with that being said, the assignment for this section is to create your own reference pack or reference sheet. Go out, do your research, find your detailed references, and put together something. And again, if you don't want to do that and you've used my character description, then just follow along and you can use my reference sheets. Okay, I'll see you in the next part.